fans, it is fight week. We got Nate Diaz versus Hamza Chamayev Saturday, on September 10th. And you know what? It's finally here. Finally here. We've been waiting for this. We've been anticipating this. And I've been looking at um, YouTube and hearing all the interviews and such. And I seen what Nate Diaz had to say to Brett Okamoto, I think it was his name was. Um, and God, you know, I he, he, he had to say a lot. He said a lot. He got a lot of things off his chest. And one of those things that really stuck out to me was that he did not want this fight and he still does not want this fight. And I 100% see where he's coming from, you know, because I've been following his uh, his call outs ever since last year after that Leon Edwards fight. And he is right. He's been calling out multiple fights. He's been calling about multiple fighters like a Dustin Poirier, like a Jorge Masvidal, like a Michael Chandler, um, even Vicente Luque he called out. You know, he's been calling out fighters after fighters after fighters. I remember on TMZ, I think it was, that they told him about fighting um, Hamza Chemayev. And he said, no, this guy's new. You know, this guy needs to put in work before he faces me. Which is true, 100%. 100%, especially now. Even after that Gilbert Burns, I still feel like he doesn't has not earned that right just yet to go in there with a Nate Diaz. You know, because with Nate Diaz... That's like a money fight. That's like a big star fight. That's the guys that, you know, been working and busting their ass nonstop to get to. Like, to get to a Connor. That's something that you don't just get. You have to work for. And for Hamza, you know, he has had some work in there. You know, he's done some good. He uh, he went in there against Jinling, I believe his name is. Uh, the Leech, if you want to call him that. Um, destroyed him. And then he had a one great fight with, uh, that one great fight with Gilbert Burns. Very good fight. And that is it. You know, he's still relatively new. He is definitely being fast-tracked 100%, you know, moving on up and such. And, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, he had his issues with COVID. When COVID first came around, you know, he was gone for a while. But prior to that, he was on a run. You know, I think he was fighting maybe once or twice a month, if that. Um, so he was definitely, definitely, you know, tearing through the, the whole division. And he's been looking good ever since. And so, but nonetheless, that's still something that you have to earn. And like Nate Diaz did, you know, Nate Diaz never didn't get no big old money fight after he got off the Ultimate Fighter. You know, I followed his career ever since Ultimate Fighter season five, ever since I heard that uh, Nick Diaz had a little brother um, named Nate Diaz. And, you know, Nate came up the long way. He didn't come up the easy way. He came up the long way, earning title shots, not by get, giving it to him, but actually fighting opponent after an opponent after opponent and earning that shot. These days, most people, you get a big name, boom, you get a title shot. No, Nate never actually got a title shot like that. He actually earned it. You know, he constantly fought these guys. And if you look back at it, a lot of the times he fought these guys in their own backyard. You know, he always went up to everybody else, always went up to everybody that um, he went against. And nine times out of ten, it was at his opponent's hometown or close enough to his hometown. So odds were always against Nate Diaz, you know, and that's why we see Nate how he is. We see Nate how he acts. We see Nate how he talks. And he's always saying these things and rightfully so. You know, because he is a big star. He is a big attraction. And he came up the long way and the hard way. And he wasn't like Conor McGregor. No disrespect. You know, no disrespect to these guys. These guys, 100%, you know, they they, they they had their star status. They did come up from the amateur rankings and such like that. And they still, um, they had their personalities. And they were able to get this kind of attraction going for themselves. So there's no disrespect to that. Conor McGregor did work his way up there and he got this this big old star status and he was able to use that um, from overseas and he brought it to the U.S. Same thing with Hamza. He got himself some good star status overseas, brought it over to the U.S. as well. So that's why he's getting this big of a name. That is why if a potential win, he could actually get a title shot, you know, with what? Three names on his name. Nate would be the third. With um, the Leech being one, Gilbert Burns being two, and now this one. Nate Diaz, that's potential. Not saying he could get it. So, yeah, that's where, that's where Nate's frustration comes from. You can hear it in Nate's tone, the way Nate speaks, the way he talks, the way um, he did this interview. He was angry. He was frustrated because he's been wanting to fight for the longest time, and he's always wanted to fight. 
You know, there's times where he took those long layoffs and I've seen him doing interviews like, hey, I want to fight. You know, I actually do want to get in a fight, you know, but he was going through some issues. He was going financial issues with his, uh, I believe, lawsuits. And there were so many other things that Nate Diaz had going on, but he always wanted to fight and he always came to fight. And so with Nate, it does feel like this is Nate versus UFC. And it's always been that way for a long time. You know, Nate versus UFC. You even hear, see some documentaries placed on different uh, outlets on YouTube about Nate versus UFC. Because Nate has always been, you know, his own boss in a way. You know, he's always tried to call his own shots. And he's always proclaimed himself as being the best fighter. And has always fought everybody and anybody. And at some, uh, sometimes he is right. Sometimes, you know, he could be a little bit hard to deal with. And sometimes he could be overstepping on uh, who he tries to fight. You know, he uh, he proclaimed himself as being beating Khabib because they had an altercation outside. I mean, come on, Nate. I would love to see you actually fight Khabib in there. And I do believe that one point or another, they were actually scheduled to fight. So nonetheless, Nate has wanted to fight for the longest time. And I do believe that this fight is more of a uh, a good way to send Nate off looking bad. Because if you look at the UFC card... Regardless of what you want to say to people, regardless of what, how you want to say this, it's not a, the most stacked card. It is not the card that is by far blowing away from everybody. It, the only reason why the card is the way it is is because this has been very anticipated of Nate's last fight. The only reason why the car, or the only reason why this fight is being as big as it is, is because of all the backstories leading up to this fight. You know, again, it's Nate versus the UFC. And this is the last call. Can Nate get it done? Can Nate, you know, um, basically ruins everybody's come out party for Hamza Chemaev? Can Nate like spoil the the party like he did with Conor McGregor? We remember when he got that replacement for Conor. Yeah, everybody was celebrating Conor this, Conor that, Conor this. Conor's gonna be a double champ. Conor's Garner, gonna, you know, fight for the lightweight championship, even though he just won the featherweight championship. And then here comes Nate. Ten days later, he was trying to save the pay per view. Conor was. So then you got Nate coming in, and then boom, chokes Nate, chokes Conor out, and becomes this massive superstar. So could he do it again? Could. Nate actually do that again against Hamza. I am in favor of Nate. I do believe he could. You know, a lot of people are counting him out. A lot of people are looking the way Hamza destroyed some of his opponents and looking at Nate and saying, oh my God, he's just going to get annihilated. Um, but I look at the ground game. I look at the boxing. I look at the opponents because you got to do that, guys. You got to look at the opponents because I promise you, you put Nate in with half of what Hamza went in against half his opponents, I promise you Nate would destroy those opponents just like Hamza did. Maybe not as brutally, but he would. So you can't necessarily, and I see this a lot, even in boxing, where people look so good against a guy who is, you know, okay. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to call him a destroyer. I'm not going to call him a great fighter. I'm not going to call him even a good fighter. I'm just calling him like, okay, maybe he's a little bit better than we're thinking. Maybe he actually deserves to be up a little, uh, a level more. Doesn't need to start at the very bottom, but maybe we could work his way up. But a lot of um, outlets are calling this guy as the next best thing, the next great thing. And yes, he did look really good against Gilbert Burns, but he also looked human. He also looked beatable in that fight. And that fight was only three rounds. This one is five. Five. Two more rounds. Ten, ten more minutes. So... And this is his first time. And this is his first headliner. And all eyes are on him. He wasn't the main event on that fight. So it wasn't a whole lot of pressure. But I'm sure he can still handle it. We'll get into that later. So we got Nate versus the UFC. That is why this pay-per-view has been so big. Because if you look at it, no title shots on the line. No uh, other big names in there. You got Tony Ferguson in there. No, no disrespect to Tony Ferguson, but... You know, we could have put him in there with somebody else as well. You know, we I would have loved to see a Tony Ferguson versus maybe a Dustin Poirier or a Tony Ferguson versus a Dan Hooker. Nonetheless, but now we got Nate Diaz versus Hamza Chemaev. They're not uh, they're not blowing this pay-per-view up. They're not adding title fights on there. They're not adding more lucrative names on there. Why is that? Why are they not doing that? Maybe because they want to destroy Nate as much as possible. They want to show the fans that, look, he cannot sell really by himself. 
Look at like look at his numbers. But I promise you it's going to sell. I promise you it's going to do good. Why? Because again, the anticipation behind this pay-per-view, the like the the I guess you could say the outlaw, not to steal Dan Hardy's uh name, but that's what Nate Diaz is almost like. He's being an outlaw against the guys. He's going against the corporation in wrestling terms. So, and that is why this is so exciting and we're so pumped to see this because a lot of us want to see, can Nate do this? Can Nate say, you know what? Hey, I want to fight Dustin Poirier. I want to fight Jorge Masvidal. I want to fight Michael Chandler. And they say, you know what? No, 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 no. You're not going to fight these guys. You're not going to fight guys that you might be able to beat. We're going to put you in there with the bottom of the guy who is actually really good, who can destroy you, who can actually beat you, make you look bad, make you look like crap. And not build up your pay-per-view and s let you go off. Because since you don't want to sign with us, because you don't want to sign another contract with us, because you don't want to play ball with us, we are not going to play ball with you. We are not going to help you out. We're not going to help brand your name more or make your name even that much bigger and you potentially beat one of our guys as you leave. And that's what's sad to me because UFC, Dane, uh, excuse me, uh, Nate Diaz in the interview said, the best fighters are always in the UFC. He never really trashed the UFC. He never said, oh, the UFC is garbage. I can't wait to leave. And, you know, F Dana and F this. He did say that multiple occasions, sure. But he's always said that the best fighters are always in the UFC. And here's another thing, guys. He's even said that he would come back. He just wants to leave for a little bit. He wants to go away for a little bit and do his own thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, if the UFC can match his numbers, can match him pay for pay like if he goes in there against jake paul and they find out how much he could potentially make and they say hey you know what scratch that you're gonna make 20 million i'll give you 20 million to face conor mcgregor you know if you're gonna make 20 million to do a grappling match i'll give you 20 million to do and stay here you know and it's like guys it's, it's really not that hard everybody deserves a right to make their own money and i know what a lot of people are saying well he's you he used the ufc no 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 they helped each other they helped each other one hand washes the other Again, you put, you get all the producers, you get all the directors, all the writers to make this one great movie. But then if you have no actors, there is no great movie. Now you get all these great actors who's ready to do a good movie, but you don't have the directors, the producers, the writers to help with a great movie. Then it's not going to be a great movie. Everybody helps each other. You got Dana White putting together the stage, getting the staff together, getting the behind the scenes together. Then you got the fighter who is going to give you one hell of a fight. That's what we always see with Nate Diaz. We always remember his fights. There's a lot of fighters that we watch that we don't really remember too, too much. But we could remember his first fight all the way to this fight right now. And, you know, and it's really sad the way they're doing it. I know they're trying to play it off as in like, oh, no, well, Nate does have a chance. And I agree with them. But I know what they're trying to do. It's just their way of selling the pay-per-view for Nate Diaz. But not really because they are trying to get those buys up. You know, if they really wanted to sell pay-per-view, if they really wanted to make this a bigger event, I promise you guys, they would have. They would have put more names on the card. They would have given Nate a Dustin Poirier because I promise you, even though Hamza is a really good name and a really good fighter, he is nowhere near the star as a Dustin Poirier or as a Michael Chandler or as a Jorge Masvidal. I promise you that if they really were caring about the pay-per-view buys, if they really cared about the fact that they want this to be a big box office um, draw, they would have put more people on there. They had Aljamain Sterling versus TJ Dillashaw. They could have kept it there, but they didn't. And why is that? Why do you guys think that is? It's just, it feels like they are trying to hurt Diaz as much as possible because he didn't want to play ball. And I think this is going to open the eyes for a lot of fighters like, damn, is this what we're going to expect if we decide to go try to do something else? Like, really? You know, here we are making you all this money. Even though Dana White paid Diaz all this money, I promise you, he made just as much money. You know, I promise you, these guys, the UFC brand made a lot of money for Diaz and Conor McGregor. For Diaz, Conor McGregor too. For Diaz and Masvidal. For Diaz even and Anthony Pettis. You know, all these fights. Even Diaz and Leon Edwards. 
I promise you, they made a lot of money too, just like Nate Diaz made a lot of money. They helped each other. And I promise you, if they were to have a good partnership and a good friendship and say, hey, you know what? Anything you need, you can always come back to me. Anything I can help you with, always come back to me. Anything I can do for you, you can always come back to me. Having this good bondship instead of saying, you know what? Screw him. I don't need him to fight a Dustin Poirier or, or, or I don't want to help build his name that much more bigger so he could go off and, you know, fight somebody else and be this big superstar because I promise you he's still going to be a big superstar. He's always going to be a big superstar. He's always going to be a big name, win, lose, or draw. He's always going to be must-see TV. There are just some people out there that no matter what you do, no matter what happens, if he gets annihilated, annihilated, by Hamza Chemaev, which can be unlikely, but possible. If he gets annihilated, he is always going to be that superstar, no matter what happens. Do you guys agree with that? Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you think this is right, what the UFC had done to him, to towards this, now we're getting closer to this pay-per-view, on why they did not put more names on this card, on why they didn't give him a bigger name to fight, to end his, end his career with, or why they did not help him even that much more. Play ball with him that much more. Why do you think that is, guys? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe. Like. Hit the hit the subscribe button. I know I just said that. Please, guys, follow. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the fans. I really appreciate all the comments. Really appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.